All right. All right. Good morning. I am Costa Constantinidis, Chair of the Environmental Protection Committee, and today the committee will hear and vote on two bills related to lead exposure and enforcement in New York City. Uh, the, model, the modern conveniences of life that we've all come to depend upon come at a cost to the environment that we all depend upon for life. Gasoline is one of those modern conveniences and was a source of lead air emissions for decades. Paint containing lead was another one of those modern conveniences. Lead was ubiquitous in the environment, particularly in air, more than 45 years ago when lead was used as an additive to gasoline. The EPA commenced the phase out of lead in all gasoline in 1973. Although bioavailability of lead has significantly decreased over time, there is no safe level of lead exposure, particularly for children. Further, approximately 1% of all women of childbearing age still have blood le levels greater than or equal to 5 micrograms per deciliter. This means that the health effects of chronic low-level exposure to lead, including adverse reproductive outcomes, remains unaddressed. Today, lead can still be found in some soils, although lead levels in soils have generally declined over time as lead was phased out of gasoline. Although lead pipe uh, was banned for use in drinking water supply lines by most countries in the 1980s, it remains an additive in many plumbing materials due to its malleability. Unfortunately, brass and bronze-based plumbing materials still release dangerous levels of lead. While the city drinking water arrives to our city safe and the healthiest, healthiest beverage to drink, some privately owned water mains that service private property may have lead present. Under those circumstances, individuals with concerns about lead in their drinking water can receive the results of a free water testing at the tap by the DEP. Where lead is found to be present in water samples taken at the tap, reverse osmosis filters are available to remove lead from drinking water at the tap. Proposed introduction 709A requires the DEP to provide the public on the city's website an online interactive map with information regarding the known lead water service lines and to make best efforts to identify all lead water service lines. It also requires the DEP to provide information to users about lead contamination prevention, lead water test kits, and how to replace lead service lines. Finally, DEP must replace any known lead water service lines that are owned by the department by no later than December 31st, 2025. Uh, intro 1063 A would require notice to the community board and to the council member within five business days of discovering or becoming aware of hazardous level of lead in soil as a result of an environmental subsurface investigation to any city project. This, uh, this legislation is intended to eliminate some of the worst impacts of lead exposure. I want to thank our speaker, Corey Johnson, for his strong leadership on all issues relating to lead contamination. Uh, on with that, I would recommend a yes vote on both bills. And I believe that we have one of the bill sponsors, uh, Councilmember Holden, here, who has a statement relating to his legislation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair Kostantidis. Um, I'm proud to sit here today and see that my bill, Intro 1063, is up for a vote. The idea of a Intro 1063 stems from a sewer and water main project in my district, which was stalled due to high levels of lead before I took office in, uh, in January 2018. Um, one of my first orders of business uh, upon taking office was to find out why the project was stalled. After nearly six months, uh, being stalled, I discovered that it was due to soil that contained, originally um, DDC said it was ash that was stalling the project. Ash now, I said, why would ash uh, found in the soil stall the project? And later, what's, you know, what's worse, uh, I had to try to, uh, after interviewing DDC a number of times and calling them, I was finally able to find out that it was lead, high levels of lead. So they were really kind of hiding it. And also found out that the soil, and it was about 40 truckloads of soil that were taken out of the Middle Village sewer and water main project, was rejected by every dump uh, in New York State. It had to be taken to J New Jersey that would accept such high levels of, of uh, lead in the soil. 
What's worse, and this is, what, this is why this bill is, is sort of uh, uh, being introduced, another reason, was the soil was dumped. All those truckloads were dumped right across from PSIS 128 in Middle Village, right across from a school. So, and these are young children being exposed to this. And to make matters worse, they didn't even bother to cover the soil with tarp. So it prompted me, obviously, to introduce this bill, 1063, which would require notice to a local community board and a council member whenever a city project uncovers hazardous levels of lead in the soil. Le you know, legislation like this should not have been necessary. City agencies need to do more and to be accountable and transparent. Intro 1063 will ensure that this doesn't happen. What happened at, at PSIS 128, that, that soil like this is not dumped across from a school. I want to thank Speaker Johnson, Councilmember Constantinides, and the 10 sponsors of this bill for getting it to this point. I urge it to be passed and enacted into law. I want to thank my staff, uh, Daniel Carzina, my legislative director, and the staff of the legislative division. Thank you, and I yield back. Thank you very much. If the clerk could add my uh, name to the sponsor list for 1063 as well. Oh, if, uh, if the clerk could call the roll. William Martin, committee clerk, roll call vote, Committee on Environmental Protection, introduction 709A and 1063A, Chair Constantinides. I vote aye. Menchaca. Please add me to both bills, and thank you so much for the work, Chair, that you're doing here, uh, and to the speaker and to the sponsors of the bill. I vote aye on both. Richard. If you can add my name to both bills, then I vote aye. Jaeger. I, with my uh, congratulations and commendations to my colleagues for getting this wise these wise measures passed today. Thank you. My vote of four in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions. Both items have been adopted by the committee. Congratulations, Councilmember Holden. Thank you for all your great work. Okay, we're going to leave the roll open for a few minutes as other colleagues come in to vote. Thank you.